Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use AWS step functions to automate your SageMaker workflows. Now, step functions is an AWS service that lets you define state machines with steps and transitions and sequential execution and parallel execution and conditional execution, etc. Step functions is integrated with a whole list of AWS services and SageMaker is one of them. Uh, in this notebook, actually, I'm going to use the Data Science SDK, which makes it really, really easy to use Step Functions and SageMaker. So let's get to work. Uh, the first step is, of course, to make sure you have the latest SDK. And then we need to add an IAM role for Step Functions to make sure Step Functions is allowed to invoke the SageMaker APIs. So there's an example here. Uh, you can use that one. You can just copy, paste that policy and create a, a, a service role for step functions uh, and use that. If you use this for uh, d just testing, it's okay. Uh, it's more than enough, but it's uh, really too permissive. As you can see, we're uh, basically allowing access to any resource and for production, that's not working at all. Okay, so if you're going to use this for production, please, please uh, restrict it as much as possible, okay? So once we have the role, okay, I created it. Uh, we can start importing the libraries that we need, so Voto3 and, and more specifically, the step functions SDK. And of course, we're uh, using an S3 bucket. That's where we'll store the data for SageMaker. And we're using the default bucket here, okay? Um, the next step is to grab a data set. And here we're going to use uh, a toy data set called the Abalon data set. And it looks like this. This data set describes a regression problem where we're trying to predict the age of the Abalone shellfish based on eight features, which represent uh, dimensions and weights of that shellfish. Okay. And as you can see, this data set is in libsvm format with uh, feature index and feature values. Okay, so let's just grab this data set. And the next step is to load it. And here I'm using a scikit-learn API for this. And, um, and then I split it three ways, training, validation, and test using a, a NumPy API and uh, I'm saving those three files, okay? And then you can see I'm splitting 70% for training, 15% for validation, and 15% for test, okay? So just a simple way to do this. Uh, of course, now I need to upload those three files to S3, so I'm defining some um, uh, file names and uploading to my bucket. And then I'm actually, um, redefining those names as S3 URIs because this is what I'm going to pass to the different steps in the workflow, okay? Um, next, we configure the SageMaker estimator and this is really business as usual. Uh, we're going to use XJBoost here. I'm actually using the latest version. Remember that XJBoost is available as a built-in algo or as a built-in framework uh, where you can pass your script. So I'm using the algo here and we're going to train on an M4 4XL instance, okay? Then I set hyperparameters, and the most important one is the objective. We want to build a linear regression model, and, uh, and we're passing some hyperparameters. I'm not gonna dive into those. If you're curious about those, you can go to the XJBoost documentation and read about them, okay? All right, now we can start building the workflow. So it's going to look like this, a training step, a saving step where we register the model that we trained to SageMaker, then a batch transform step where we're going to batch predict the test data set. Then we create an endpoint configuration and an endpoint to deploy the model to a real time endpoint for prediction. Okay, so these steps highlight the, the a very basic SageMaker workflow as we'll see, this uh, step functions workflow can be um, uh, edited and uh, we could add extra steps if we wanted, if we wanted to maybe invoke a Lambda function uh, before 
deploying the endpoint to run extra checks on the model, you know, and whatnot. We could absolutely do this, okay? But here, we're just trying to keep it super simple. Okay, so let's just run this, keep going. Um, we need to define the execution input, and these are basically parameters that you pass to the workflow. So here I'm passing three strings, the job name, the model name, and the endpoint name, and so that I will have unique names for those three things every time I run the, uh, the workflow. Okay, it's just good practice to uh, make those names unique and avoid name clashes. Okay, so the first step is the training step. And it's the equivalent of calling the fit API with the SageMaker SDK. So as we can see, I'm, I'm passing the estimator, okay, that we defined above. And I'm passing the two channels for training and validation. Okay, so training set, validation set. Okay, simple as that. All right, next, we create the model. So this is really a poorly named API. It's it's the create model API in the SageMaker SDK. And I wish it was called the register model API because it's not really creating anything. The model has been already trained. Um, so what it's doing is it's really registering that model as a SageMaker model using the S3 artifact. But anyway, uh, that's the name. So what we're doing here is just uh, registering the model with the name passed in the execution input. All right, next we're transforming the test set. And here, uh, again, this is really similar to what we do with the SageMaker SDK. We use the transformer object on uh, an M5 large instance, and uh, we pass the location of the test set in S3. Okay, so this is a, an S3 URI here. Okay, extremely similar to what we do with the SDK. All right, then we create the endpoint config which really says, okay, use this model and uh, use this name and set this up on a M5 large instance, okay? And then we create the endpoint itself where we basically say, okay, create the endpoint using the config above, okay? Again, exactly the same thing we would do with the, the Boto3 SDK um, and the SageMaker APIs. All right, so now we've defined each individual step and we have to uh, bring them together and chain them. Of course, the order matters here. Training, uh, model creation, um, batch transform, endpoint config, and endpoint, okay? Using this uh, definition, we can create the workflow itself, okay? So we give it a, a unique name with a timestamp. We pass that the definition of the steps and of course the execution input with those uh, strings for uh, job name, model name, endpoint name. Okay, we can visualize it and okay, it looks all right. Okay, that's a good, <laughs> that's a good thing to, to see this and see it's, uh, it's all in the right order. And then we can create the workflow. Okay, which, which again, you know, uh, kind of registers it to step function and we can execute it. Okay, so this execute API is what gets everything going and we see we're passing the inputs, right? With the three unique names for job model and endpoint. Okay, so if we go to the, to the step functions console, we can see that this uh, step functions workflow is running. Okay, so we can see the different steps and these will uh, progress uh, in a few minutes. We can see information about each step, etc., etc. Okay, pretty cool stuff. Uh, we can also edit it if we want. And if you've written step functions before, you're familiar with this. So this is the step functions language, which shows basically uh, JSON uh, for each step and the parameters for each step. Okay, so we see everything here, right? Just a JSON version of, uh, of that graphical uh, workflow on the right-hand side, okay? 
and we can find all those parameters. And as, as you can see, the, the data science SDK that we use is just um, really compact and it makes it really easy to, uh, to write this stuff without having to write uh, the, JSON, uh, the JSON code, but you can still go and do this. So if we wanted to insert a call to a Lambda function, we could do this pretty easily. Just select this, select a function, from uh, from your lambdas and configure the payload and you can see the um, the equivalent json code here right of course you could write this stuff directly if uh, if you wanted to but uh, this is just to show you that uh, this uh, high level workflow we build with the data science sdk is really um, a step function workflow and you could add all of these uh, extra states if you wanted to right so i'm not going to modify that guy this workflow is going to run for a few minutes so i have a, the exact same one that i run just uh, just a few minutes ago and uh, and we can see it's gone through all steps successfully right so it's all green and uh, and the endpoint has been deployed and we can zoom in uh, we can zoom into every single uh, uh, transition and, and look at the steps and look at the parameters right and of course we can run those again and again and again and that's the whole point once you've uh, debugged your workflow you can just uh, run them on demand and um, and without doing anything right just start that new workflow using um, using the state machine and it will run uh, for as long as needed and and complete etc so uh, it's a, it's an easy way to automate um, to automate your ML workflows now we don't have to use the console we can use APIs for all of this so we can see the progress I can see my workflow is uh, uh, running the batch transform step I can list events right so pretty much what we saw in the console uh, we can list executions, so multiple executions of that workflow. So there's only one for now. Okay, I can list all the workflows and I can generate a CloudFormation template. Okay, so I'm writing this to a file and voila, as we say. Okay, so if you want to use CloudFormation to replicate this, well, you can automatically do this with this template. Okay. So um, if you want to run this in different regions, make sure to adapt for this, right? For example, we can see uh, we're using, uh, I'm using the US East one region here. So uh, I'm pulling the uh, US East one based XGBoost container. So these are not generic templates, but uh, it's not difficult to, uh, to modify them, to make them uh, region independent, okay? But this will replicate the exact same workflow. Uh, and, uh, and of course you get all the CloudFormation benefits uh, you can uh, you can update um, stacks and you know define uh, change sets etc etc okay so another way to uh, to automate your workflows okay all right well that's pretty much what I wanted to show you uh, I will put a link to this notebook which is a, a modified version of one of the uh, SageMaker examples and I will also put a link to uh, a very cool um, uh, reinvent session with one of our customers who built a pretty fancy automation workflow using step functions and SageMaker. So uh, that will uh, inspire you. Well, that's it for today. Hope you liked it. See you soon. Bye-bye.